Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. You know, as I started learning about detailed circuit analysis years ago, I had the mindset that I was going to conquer this thing. And with all these great tools, I can sit down, calculate this value and that value, and then put the circuit together and it would behave exactly the way I designed it. May I say that it didn't take very long before the realities of real life circuits made with real life components emerged. My whole purpose here in this video is to help you to understand and appreciate what we actually do in circuit analysis and design and to maybe breathe some realism into that process for you. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, if I can do this analysis and design thing perfectly, then everything will be as I designed it, right? This all begins by realizing that even if we have the perfect methodology for circuit analysis and design that takes into consideration every possible variable, we are still going to arrive at unrealistic component values. So what do I mean by that? Well, suppose I'm able to do all of this and arrive at a resistor value of 23.4915 K ohms. I mean, this is the absolute perfect value of a resistor for that particular application. But the reality is that absolutely no one makes a 23.4915 K ohm resistor. The closest values that are available in standard resistor values is either 23.2 K ohms or the next one up, a 23.7 K ohm. But you simply cannot have your 23.4915 K ohm resistor. To further this same point, suppose you buy that 23.2 K ohm resistor. Well, guess what? It isn't going to be 23.2 K ohms. These all have tolerances. So our 23.2 K ohm resistor might be any value from 22.968 K ohms to 23.432 K ohms, that is, if it's a 1% resistor. So the point of calculating these values is to give us something to look for and select from as we look at the components that we can buy. But there's another point to this too. Well, the reality is there are a lot of things going on in real life components that are difficult to bring into our analysis. If we were to attempt to do this, we would be spending hours and hours on totally complex mathematical equations to calculate even the simplest circuit. So we have to be willing to accept a somewhat imperfect model of reality to make the process of analysis and design doable without some kind of supercomputer. And again, even if we could do all this, we would still be coming up with values of components that we would have to compromise on anyway, because no one makes a component with that exact calculated value. Now, there's one more reason that I have to share with you. Well, lastly, there are things that we simply cannot truly know. And so we have to make assumptions about things. In part, this is to simplify the math. And in part, it is because, well, we just don't know them and we can't know them. In these cases, we can double back on ourselves later to see if our assumptions are correct. One case in point, we make the assumption that the base emitter voltage is going to be a fixed 0.7 volts. But actually, it's not. The actual base emitter voltage is proportional to the thermal voltage, Vt, times the natural logarithm of the base current, Ib. But 
we choose to assume an unchanging base emitter voltage of 0.7 volts, well, because it's easier. Well, so you might ask, then what is the point of breaking my head over this circuit analysis stuff? And that is a good question. Well, the point is twofold. The first and most obvious is that it gives us a place to start as we look into the vast world of electronic components to choose the ones that will appear in our design. I mean, how do we know that the 1K ohm 1% 1 quarter watt resistor is the right one for this application? Why not a 1.5K ohm or maybe a 499 ohm? It's because we did the math in our analysis. The second is that it gives us an intimate understanding about how the circuit works and what parts of it interacts with what other parts of it. It helps us to know what to adjust and how to adjust it to bring the completed prototype into compliance with the design criterion. I mean, here's a case in point. The output impedance of a common collector circuit. Who would have ever guessed that would have only an indirect connection to the value of the emitter resistor itself and everything to do with the emitter current. I know that this truly took me by surprise. Through the process of analysis, we learned that the purpose of the emitter resistor was to work in concert with the base biasing to establish a specific emitter current which determines the output impedance of the circuit. At the same time, it simultaneously sets the quiescent DC output voltage. We never would have appreciated this reality apart from our analysis of the circuit. It also allows us to understand how to change the values used in the prototype to bring it into compliance with the design requirements. So, to recap, the object of circuit analysis and design is to get us to a close starting point for the final implementation with real life components. Now, we can get pretty close with our analysis and then adjust it to perfection with a few minor, well-informed changes with the prototypes. Now, it is very rare for the first prototype to operate exactly according to the design criterion that we received going into analysis and design. So, just relax, enjoy the process, and be creative. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.